Panoramic. Mm. Mm. I don't see uh, I don't see Janet sitting in the lane. Well, it should probably show up. I mean, it could be a weather traffic issue. <laughs> All right, let's go on the record. Uh, we're here this evening for uh, our uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting. Um, I'm not gonna call the roll. I'll indicate that all members of the board are present with the exception of uh, Ms. Anderson, who uh, has not indicated that she'll appear by Zoom. So it's likely that she'll join us in a moment. Um, we have no uh, old business on the agenda, and I'm told that there is no public comment to be offered. So the first uh, item on the agenda is calling the uh, zoning uh, case that it, we have this evening, which is 2406, um, uh, which is CIRMAC Building LLC. And this is a request for conditional use for a planned development to allow an existing duplex to remain on the subject property. The matter was published in the Daily Herald uh, on April 24th, 2024. And I have uh, no objections or substantive comments filed by any of the entities to whom the uh, petition has been circulated. I should uh, correct myself. Uh, I read the uh, docket number is 24006. It should be 24006A because this is an amended petition. And we've heard this case before. The amendment is simply uh, a restatement of the request. Uh, I don't have any uh, new uh, surveys or site plans. So I'll turn it over. Would you? Uh, are you the petitioner's attorney or what? I, I am, yes, sir. My name is Vince Tessitore from the law firm of Lindell and Tessitore PC in Naperville. And we represent the owner of the property, which is Cermak Builders LLC. Do you want me to swear to me? I don't know. Are, are you? Are, do you have clients that are coming to testify or are you going to present the testimony? I do not. I'm going to present and I'll present to the extent that your honor wishes me to present. I am going to ask that the previous record of March 21st, 2024, be incorporated and admitted into these proceedings on, on that date. Yeah, it will be, it's an amended petition, so that uh, record is already a part of this amended case. Uh, could you raise your hand and be sworn in, please? Sure. You just only swear from the testimony about to give with this cause now here and be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. And again, my name is Vince Testori on behalf of the applicant. Uh, do you have any new exhibits? I, I do not have any new exhibits. Okay, the, the exhibits that we're asking to be admitted are the same as before. There are five exhibits that we did have admitted at the previous proceeding. Okay. Happy to go through those to the extent that the board wants me to. Um, and to the extent that the board wants me to go through each and every one of the conditional use factors, I'm happy to do that. I did do that. At the previous proceeding, all the board members were present with his honor, the chairman being present uh, remotely. Uh, but a brief overview is that the property was purchased by our client in July of 2023. Uh, the property was built in the year 1900 as a duplex. It had remained as a duplex according to the township records, which have been admitted into evidence until at least 2012. However, the um, so at least in 2012, the property was legal non-conforming. It was discovered by the county that in 2017, the then owner had taken one of the entrances to one of the duplex units and converted that to a window. Uh, that was also the case in 2018. When our clients bought when our client bought the property in 2023, it had been converted back to to a duplex. We don't know exactly when that happened, but it must have been sometime between 2018 and 2023. Uh, so the duplex has been existing prior to our client's purchase, and we know at least for 112 years um, from its its construction. So we're here. In the reason for the amended petition 
is that we originally requested a conditional use for the duplex and realized that a duplex is not one of the listed conditional uses under the R4 zoning code. Uh, so we amended that request to be a planned development because the planned development is in fact one of the listed conditional uses under the R4 zoning code. So in essence, we, we are here requesting that the conditional use for the plan development be granted. Um, the record is uh, complete with our evidence for to support the conditional uses, but again, in the factors therefore, but again, I'm happy to go through that in any detail that the board would wish me to. Well, I don't think you need to enumerate the conditional uses. First, uh, let me recognize Ms. Anderson's attendance. Um, I don't think you need to, you know, go through the conditional uses, uh, but I would like to know uh, how this constitutes a planned development. Well, a planned development in, includes, I mean, could could be very encompassing to include, you know, whatever the sort of mixed uses are that the petitioner is requesting. This is, is simply a, a two unit structure in its existing form that's not being altered at all that we're requesting be the planned development that we're requesting a conditional use for. But so uh, the original uh, petition that was before us that's part of this record was faulty because it requested a conditional use for use that is not cited as a conditional use, namely a duplex. Uh, there is a catch-all uh, for conditional use for a planned development. What is it about this project that makes it a planned development? Anything well, could be a plan yeah, development. If, if anything really can be a plan development, it, it really kind of uh, goes back to the use of the property not um, being a permitted use, but being desired by the county, the community, and being consistent with uh, not only the factors that are set forth within the conditional use, but desired by the guidelines concerning the county in general. Uh, one of those guidelines being that affordable housing is desired within the county. And you're right, there could be a myriad of different plan development uses that could fall into that catch-all category. We think this is one that is consistent with the goals of the county. But to, to sort of describe every potential <laughs> plan development use, would would really be impossible because it could be anything that isn't a permitted use, but is desired and permitted within the factors set forth. And are you familiar with the uh, the uh, Living Word uh, case as it relates to conditional uses? I've heard of the Living Word case, but I have not read it recently. Okay. Uh, well, I didn't mean to you know, this is not, I'm not trying to joust with you about the legalities. I just, uh, for my own sake, I don't think that the uh, rationale of the living word standard uh, applies in this instance to permitted uses, but that, that's another, you know, that's somewhat esoteric and should be reserved for discussion at uh, our recommendation meeting. Does anyone in the, on the board have questions of the petitioner? No questions. We all know what uh, is being requested here, I guess. Um, can I turn to the audience? Do you want to make, uh, either of you want to make comments about this case? Just yes or no for now. Yes. Both of you? Okay, would you raise your hands and be sworn in? You do solemnly swear from testimony about to give this cause in our hearing be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guide. Yes. Right. Uh, Who would like to go first? You're both <laughs> pointing at the other. <laughs> okay. okay. Tell us your name, spell your name, and then once again, um, I think we recognize you for last time, but tell us 
uh, your address, where you live in relation to this petition or this property, and then tell us how you feel. Okay. Go right ahead. Uh, Jim Barrington, J-U-N. Just a little touch louder, if you would. Please, I can't hear. Barrington, F-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. I live at 1064 East 4th Street, Aurora, Crypto 502, directly across from the Drink of Boston. And um, we were at the last meeting. Did I say everything I'm supposed to say? Yeah. I, I can't hear. Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that I had said all the stuff I was supposed okay. to say initially. Um, as I mentioned at our last meeting, We've lived in our house uh, since it was built 22 years ago. Um, the property is an asparagus farm before that, where our units were built as part of Aurora, which is directly across the street from the house in question, which is part of Neola. Um, and when we moved in, there was a single family in there, a lady, an elderly lady, and she was there, I don't can't tell you how many years, but after she moved out, another single family moved in, uh, husband, wife, and a daughter, and their family owned the business, which was adjacent to the house in question. And uh, we were told by them that the house in question served as an ice uh, storage facility for this business years and years ago that used to be a bean factory, but now it's just nothing, it's just a building. Um, and our concern is that having a duplex in the neighborhood, which is entirely residential homes, homeowners, is going to possibly affect the property values and the turnover that you typically see with rental type units is going to, you know, we think not be an asset to the community. And already we can see no maintenance has been done on the outside at all. The grass hasn't even been cut. We hear fighting from the two tenants that have apparently been renting the units over various issues, such as there's only one driveway that they were supposed to share somehow. So they, they basically are fighting over that because the neighbor doesn't want to use her driveway to access the single driveway. So it's just creating an unpleasant neighborhood for us in what has always been a very, very tranquil neighborhood. Hey, thank you, sir. Actually, she said everything I was going to say. Well, then tell us your name, if oh, you will. Robert wanted. Barrington, husband of June, uh, same address, 1064. And you agree with her comments? Yes, I do. All right, thank you very much. Back to the Petitioner then for a summary or a response. The only response uh, that I would point to is we we do have. Actually, this isn't in the record. I there was testimony yeah. concerning, and I do have uh, photographs of this. But um, I think the comment was that yeah. 22 years ago the property was a single family. Or, or perhaps was occupied by a single family. Actually, that may be both may be true. Twenty two years ago, we we do have evidence that the property was a duplex. It may be that one family lived in the property and the other unit was was not occupied. I do have, and I could submit this as evidence as exhibit number six, a photograph of the property dated April two thousand and twelve, where you can see uh, the separate units as a duplex mm -hmm. with the separate entrances on yeah, both we'll sides. That, is your, uh, that also has six, did you say? That would be number six, yes. That also has two additional photos that I had alluded to previously from 2017 and 2018, where the entrance was converted to a window. I have copies of that too, I can pass out. Well, we'll, take, we'll take this first one as your hearings exhibit, and then you can pass out copies to the members if you like. Sure. <clears throat> That's all I have. Okay, uh, let's note uh, 
Exhibit six is group exhibit six consisting of three yeah. photographs of the property, all of which are uh, dated at the bottom. Well, here passes the ball. <clears throat> mm -hmm. well, all right. Um, I guess you, you, that's uh, that's all you have in terms of exhibits, or that's all you have for presentation. That's all I have for presentation. Okay, very good. Then we'll close the uh, hearing this evening and uh, set the matter for our June 6 recommendation meeting. <clears throat> That's to be held at 530 uh, in the cafeteria room because we have other cases where we'll have, uh, we anticipate uh, a crowd that will be a little too big for this room. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You.